So FC Barcelona maintained a two-point gap with Real Madrid with what was really a hard-fought and probably undeserved win away at Osasuna. And I just have one question for Xavi Hernandez, which is why do you like to complicate your own life, Xavi? Like, why? Why do you always have to do it? Like, why did you sign the extra forward just to keep on playing with four midfielders in your starting setup? You could have just said, you know what? I don't need Joao Felix. But you still got him. And then the... Honestly, guys, I don't even know where to start with this. It's going to be a different kind of match review because this one is going to be a bit more of a rant. Like, it's not going to be like my usual kind of reviews. FC Barcelona, of course, beat Osasuna by two goals to one, just like they did last season away at El Sadar. And just like last season away at El Sadar, there was a red card. This time, though, it was for an Osasuna player, bringing down Lewandowski, who eventually converted the penalty that he won for himself so you know good on Lewandowski to get a winning goal and I mean good I guess that Barcelona got a result but honestly speaking for me I'm not happy about the result like one thing which I tend to always look at from like the team's uh, the team's perspective is always performances over results. If I compare the performance last time when we beat Osasuna with 10 men to the performance this time around, last time around our performance was way better. Just simply because you could see a lot more drive, I think. Right now, what this team looks like, that performance, as well as, you know, the, the tactics and just generally how everything is unfolding, it's all very stale in front of goal we look quite sterile to be honest i was fully expecting Lewandowski would have missed that penalty not you know anything i have against him but just because that's kind of how blunt we have been in front of goal like one minute in we should have been on the score sheet but somehow Ilkay Gundogan decides to forget all of his clutch goal scoring genes from Man City i guess it's not yet the end of the season so you know we'll wait for like the last days of the season before we start criticizing Gurungan for not scoring chances. <laughs> I mean, that's when it's supposed to kick in, right? Anywho, everything else from FC Barcelona, like I said, very stale, very sterile, very... Uh, just, we were less threatening than a kitten at, at some moments, you know, because we had Gundogan time and time again trying to make those runs in behind Osasuna and mind you that ball over the top was on just about every time because Osasuna were not playing with a deep you know or a low block they were playing relatively high it was something like a mid block so you know there was a lot of room over the defense the passes could have been made but the passes were never made Christensen would see the pass do you know shape up like he's about to play it then just play a sideways pass same thing as well Jus Kunde, same thing as well Frankie de Jong and I don't know where these tactics are coming from from Xavi but I think that if there was at least one more forward on the pitch if we were at least stretching the pitch a little wider we would probably have a bit more inclination to hit those balls out wide and you know use those forwards out there but again it's this two forwards and four midfielders business Xavi Hernandez please listen to me you are not managing a small team you are managing FC Barcelona at FC Barcelona if you find a new revolutionary tactic like playing with Gavi as a false winger that starts getting your results the opposition eventually catches on and you know they start to prepare for you because unlike a team like say I don't know Almeria or Granada whereby no one is really going to sit down and be like, we are about to make a master plan to stop Granada or to stop Almeria, right? They're going to do that for FC Barcelona because they're thinking, I don't want Barca to do to us what they did to us last time. I don't want them to do it to us again, all right? If you smash the team 4-0 last time playing with Gavi as a false winger, best believe that they're going to set up to stop you from beating them 4-0 whilst playing with Gavi as a false winger. But guess what? Xavi just keeps on doing it there is no I don't know exactly how to put it here like see my dog is joining in like can hear some barking in the background that's just how frustrating it's been watching Xavi try over and over again to do something which the opponents have adapted to now there's going to be an international break and 
with all the football that Lewandowski has been playing so far and which he will be playing for Poland, you can only hope he doesn't get an injury. Because if he does, well, maybe that will make things interesting and Xavi Hernandez will actually have to do some coaching of different tactics aside from four midfielders. Although, I still wouldn't put it past Xavi Hernandez to still continue playing with four midfielders even if Lewandowski went down because he did that already last season, right? Tamo Lewandowski was injured just around January and he kept on and he might just go ahead and do it again should that happen. And in fact, I don't know exactly what Xavi thinks sometimes because Ferran Torres coming into this game was our in-form forward, right? You brought him on against Villarreal, he scored. You brought him on against Cadiz, he scored. And in fact, against Villarreal, he didn't just score. He changed the game for us. And you're thinking, well, maybe that would be enough to get him a start. Yo, you know what? No. It's not. Because for Xavi Hernandez, you're still going back on the bench, Ferran. And somebody explained to me what exactly does Xavi want. Did he actually mean it when he said that there are no starters? In his eyes, you just look at those that are performing. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what Xavi is going to do, especially with this new dynamic that he has now with a guy like Joao Felix and his team, who we know has got no problems going against a manager if he's not being played. So, you know, we'll see what will happen exactly because I don't see how Xavi can keep on justifying playing four midfielders if the tactic isn't even working anymore. It would be fine if it's working like last season it was working. Nobody complained that Ferran and that Fatih were not getting so many minutes because, you know, the tactic was working. It was effective. But right now, it's not effective. And I mean, we won't even get into talking about how Xavi, again, is already overusing Gundogan and is not giving him any rest and is not, you know, giving a kid like Furman more minutes so that should the eventuality of a Gundogan injury come up, you know, we at least have somebody who's going to be near match sharp to, you know, start those games. But yeah, you know, I have no idea exactly how Xavi sees his team and what he means when he says that everybody can be a starter and that it's always going to be a meritocracy because if there's one thing that's very true, there's never been a meritocracy with Xavi Hernandez, which is why last season Dembele was starting so many times, even over Rafinha or over Fati, regardless of how those guys performed. So this is probably going to be Barcelona's biggest challenge this season. Can Xavi get over whatever obsession he has right now with four midfielders? Can Xavi get over himself? I don't know if I should put it that way, but yeah, because if not... I wouldn't be surprised to see Barcelona fail to come out of their Champions League group because who are you going to beat playing that kind of football? We're playing against Osasuna's second choice team, okay? Their, their coach rotated nine players. Nine players, okay? So we're looking at bench warmers and probably academy players who Barcelona was struggling against. Tell me how you're supposed to beat teams like Shakhtar or like FC Porto. If you can't beat big team of Osasuna, if you can't, dominate them. These are the issues that Barca will have this season if Xavi Hernandez doesn't wake up and doesn't go back to what brought him so much success at the start. Because what's the one thing that we liked so much about Xavi when he just came from outside and when, you know, he was working with the likes of Adama Traore and Luke de Jong and Ferran Jukla and Ferran Torres and like all these guys who nobody knew and nobody gave a chance. What's the one thing he was doing? He was fluid tactically and he was also quite, what's that word, flexible. He wasn't chained down to one formation or to one tactic. If something wasn't working, he changed it. He doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. Maybe it's the comfort of knowing that he won a league title playing with that four midfielder system of knowing that he beat Real Madrid in El Clasicos, he won trophies playing that formation. But listen, Xavi, people have adapted. Times have changed. If you do not change, just right here after the international break, we have Real Betis. And I promise you, they are going to spank our butts because everything is so sterile. Everything is so stale. Everything is so predictable and obvious. You push the ball out, maybe Baude will bring it out or maybe Gavi will bring it out. Then he's going to play a backwards pass to Oriu Romeu or to Frankie de Jong 
who will then play three or four passes between each other and Christensen and Kunde before once again spreading it wide, trying to find Lamine. And if Lamine is pressed again, it goes back to those guys. It's so obvious. It's so repetitive. It's so sterile. It's not going to get you where you need to be in this world of football. Xavi, it's time to do your next step. What's the next tactical evolution? That's what we're waiting to see from Xavi Hernandez. Not that nonsense we saw against Osasuna's second string team who quite honestly deserved more than zero points from that match. At some point, they even deserved to be ahead. So, you know, I honestly don't know what else I could say. Like I said, it's not my typical kind of match review here. I just felt like getting some stuff off of my chest because, I mean, I did this whole video at the, before the season started talking about how Barcelona are going to shape up under Xavi Hernandez. And all of that was supposed to be building on what he's done so far. But right now, he's just stagnated. He stopped trying to do the next thing. So whether that's three at the back with four midfielders and three forwards, I don't care what it is. But do something different. Do something new. Make the opposition be on the back foot because of your tactics. Not relying on Pedri, not relying on a 16-year-old Laminia Mao to do the magic. That's all that it has to be from Xavi Hernandez. So, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts, guys, for that performance. So, like, you know, I said, Barca got the result. For those who care about the results, good, good on you, I guess, Xavi Hernandez. But for those who look at the performance more than the result then, you know, right now, the, this should be sending alarm bells ringing here for FC Barcelona because they haven't even really played against top teams, right? I mean, Villarreal, at best, are going to be a Europa League team. The teams Barca has played so far are Hetafe, Cadiz, Villarreal, and Osasuna. These are not teams you expect to give you the hardest time in La Liga, but look at how Barca have struggled in each of those games. Something has to change. That's what I think. And we need to worry more about the performances once again. And Xavi needs to go back to what worked so well for him when he came to this club. Anywho, those are my thoughts on the match, guys. Let me know yours in the comment section. Otherwise, I thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day and for Sabasa.